Welcome to this movie which deals with the Planck distribution, a topic that uh, probably every student sees at uh, undergraduate physics. My name is Jos Dyson and I teach statistical mechanics to master students applied physics at the Delft University of Technology. Um, in fact, uh, the Planck distribution may be a bit more subtle than it seems at first sight because uh, it is usually derived using the Bose-Einstein distribution with a zero chemical potential and then the calculation is very easy. However, uh, the reason why the chemical potential needs to be taken zero is, uh, is to me, is, is not really obvious. And uh, I hope it's helpful to see how I address that point in this movie. In order to address this problem of the chemical potential of photons, we quickly review the quantum harmonic oscillator, which I covered extensively in a previous movie. The uh, partition function is easy to calculate. The energy levels of the harmonic oscillator are h bar omega times n plus one half, and we need to sum the, the Boltzmann factor over all the occupations n running from zero to infinity. I would like to calculate the average value of this number n, which I indicate by n in these uh, angular brackets, and that's given by the following expression. In the numerator you see a factor of n. We sum now from n is 1 to infinity because n is 0 would not give any contribution. Then we have the Boltzmann factor and we need to de divide by the partition function which is the same as over here. And it's uh, not difficult to evaluate the uh, quotient, quotient of the sums on the right hand side. In fact, we define psi to be e to the power of minus beta h omega, and then we can rewrite the sum in the numerator and the denominator easily in this way, where we have um, left out the uh, term with one half, because that's a term that I can put in front of the sum in the numerator and in the denominator, so in fact this factor of one half is cancelled. It's easy to evaluate these terms. For example, the denominator is geometric series. For example, let's call the denominator Z wiggle. It's not the same as the, as the partition function of the harmonic oscillator because we miss this uh, factor of one half. But we can evaluate it. It's just a geometric series and the result is Z wiggle is one over one minus Xi. Moreover, we can immediately find an expression for the quotient of the two sums here, and um, that is simply given by the derivative of the logarithm of z wiggle with respect to the xi. So if we take this guy, we take the logarithm, then taking the derivative with respect to xi first gives us a 1 over z wiggle, and then the derivative of z wiggle gives me n times xi to the power n minus 1, and in order to compensate for the minus 1, we multiply by xi. And then we find immediately that the expectation value of n, that was what we were calculating, is given by xi divided by 1 minus xi, and if you plug in the right value for xi, you find immediately this formula, which is recognized as the Bose-Einstein distribution with zero chemical potential. So this is the energy h bar omega, so we have e to the power beta energy minus one, which is the Bose-Einstein distribution function with mu is zero. So the next step is then to move on to the electromagnetic field. And uh, it can be shown, although I will not go into details here, that the Hamiltonian of the, of the electromagnetic field can be written as a sum over all the modes of the radiation um, and then a Hamiltonian which is a Hamiltonian only of that mode and that's just a quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator so it's a sum of independent harmonic oscillators it's very similar to the normal mode analysis in, uh, in solids you have always a sum of independent harmonic oscillators once you're close to equilibrium, and in fact for the electromagnetic field, that always holds. So the electromagnetic field, the Hamiltonian of that field, can be written as a sum of independent harmonic oscillators. A word about modes. 
the, what characterizes a mode that's polarization in the electromagnetic uh, radiation you have two modes there's two transverse polarizations depending on the gauge you have only transverse polarizations and then there is a wave factor k so we usually have the, the wave factor k in addition to the polarization that characterizes a mode the energy of the mode is given only by the k and it's uh, omega as a function of k is c times k and in view of the fact that all these modes are independent of each other for each mode the expectation value of the number of quanta in that mode can be calculated independently and we have the same result as we obtained before for the harmonic oscillator but now with the frequency omega depending on k Now you may argue that this is not a complete story because I pretend that there are only photons in the system and perhaps these photons they interact usually with uh, the walls of the container and there is another problem because there are vacuum polarizations and because all these modes are completely independent of each other we can calculate the occupation within each mode it's in, for all cases given by an independent harmonic oscillator and so we find the same result as we derived before for an harmonic oscillator and that's the Bose-Einstein distribution with chemical potential zero. But wait a minute, we have uh, of course assumed that there are only photons in the system and in reality these photons will always interact for example with excitations in the walls of the container and there is an additional uh, problem even if we don't have any walls if we have vacuum we are facing vacuum fluctuations it is interesting to consider our other arguments for the chemical potential of the photons being zero and uh, i shall briefly discuss interactions with electrons photons can excite electrons or electrons which decay to a lower energy level uh, will emit a photon and this can be formulated as a kind of reaction. This reaction expresses the fact that a low energy electron can absorb a photon and then end up in a higher energy state, or it could be the other way around. The high energy electron emits a photon and is left in a lower energy state. For such a reaction, the equilibrium condition tells us that n u times mu nu is zero, where the nu labels the different components on the left and the right hand side. The mu nu are the chemical potentials of the different species that occur in the formula. And the n u are the prefactors, where here we see a one, there is a one, and there is also a one, but it's counted with a minus sign because it's on the left hand side. So if we translate this formula to our case, we see that the mu of the electron on the left hand side plus the chemical potential of the photons, that's a gamma, minus the mu of the electron on the right hand side equals zero. And from there we immediately see that the mu gamma is zero. So note that although this electron is in a low energy state and that is in a high energy state, those electrons are member of the same electron population, which is a population of uh, identical particles, and therefore they have the same chemical potential. Just as a side remark, I want to mention that uh, such arguments can also be used for a system in which there are not only electrons but also positrons and positrons are the antiparticles of electrons so they have a plus charge i will call the chemical potentials now mu minus for the electron mu plus for the positron and this uh, equation immediately translates into the condition for the chemical potentials that uh, mu of the electrons plus mu of the positrons is equal to the mu of the photons and because the number of electrons minus the positrons must be constant, that's a condition which is imposed by charge conservation, we see that the, num that the chemical potential of the two species must be the same. And so we have that the mu gamma is two times the mu of an electron or a positron. Um, that doesn't tell us that mu gamma is zero. We need additional arguments for that. They, can, they come usually from uh, quantum field theory. But um, anyhow, 
uh, if you buy those, if you would accept those additional arguments, then that is another reason for seeing that mu gamma is indeed zero. Let us now consider the modes that can be occupied by the field. We assume that we have an L times L times L box, a cubic volume, and then the K vectors are given by 2 pi over L and X and Y and Z. And the dispersion relation is given by omega K is C times the norm of the K vector. And the energies are obviously H bar times the angular frequency omega K. Now this enables us to calculate the number of modes between omega and omega plus d omega. So that corresponds to a small uh, slice dk. So this is a kind of uh, this is a sphere in k space, and we are looking at how many modes there are in this uh, spherical shell with thickness dk. Imagine this to be a three-dimensional sphere with thickness dk. Then the separation of the points inside that sphere uh, uh, is in fact the volume occupied per point on the grid is 2 pi over L in the power 3 because 2 pi, pi over L is the lattice constant and L to the third is V and we can immediately divide the volume of the spherical shell which is 4 pi k squared which is the surface times the, th the thickness dk we divide that by the volume per k point 2 pi to the third and then we have a v we want to have in the end the number of modes between omega and omega d omega and we want to have that per volume so we divide by another vector of v and then we have a factor of 2 due to the two polarizations of the light and if we evaluate everything we get k squared dk over pi squared. So that's the number of modes I have between omega and omega plus d omega. So now we can calculate the energy which is uh, in present in the radiation in the interval between omega and omega plus d omega. Well, we should keep in mind that, mind that for photons omega is ck. So we take the number of modes we multiply that by the energy and uh, by the occupation of the mode, which is the Boltzmann factor e to the power of beta h bar omega minus 1. And using this omega is ck that immediately leads to this formula, which is the Planck distribution.